Hey everybody, and welcome to another delightful interview with another expert. Uh, today I'm going to be interviewing Joanna Dinsdale, and she's a clinical hypnotist from the Toronto area. I believe she lives just outside of Toronto. Um, and, you know, she's uh, a young hypnotist doing amazing things. She's got a podcast. She's got a lot going on. She's got an active YouTube uh, channel where she puts up a lot of great content. She's here on Instagram. And recently she was actually on Family Feud. She was a contestant on Family Feud. Uh, so, And it was just last week, I believe, uh, Monday through Wednesday, her and her family. And it was awesome to see her there. So I'm going to be asking her about her experience there. I'm going to be asking her about her experience as a hypnotist. Uh, and hearing all about, um, you know, all the wonderful and terrific stuff she's been doing. So she'll be popping on here any second. Get your questions ready if you have questions about um, anything that I've mentioned. And uh, she'll be popping up here any second. So please help me welcome Joanna uh, to the live stream. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody that's popping on. All you wonderful people. Wow, lots of people joining wow, today. lots of people joining today. Okay, there's Joanna. Okay, there's Joanna. Hey, how's, hey, how's I'm good, thanks. Can you hear me nice and clear? I can hear I can hear I think so, but I can hear myself. Hear myself. Oh, 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 like an echo. Like an echo. Oh, an echo. Okay, hold on. Let me adjust this here. How's that? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. That's, That's better. better. I can still kind of hear myself. Can you hear me okay, though? Can you hear me okay, though? I can hear you fine. I mean, I can connect my headphones. Maybe that would help. Uh, I think uh, it's okay. I think it's okay. Yeah, 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 it's, a, yeah, it's, a, it's all right. It's yeah. all right, yeah. You're on headphones, You're on though? headphones though? No, I could be. Let me see if I put my stuff. Maybe that'll help. That'll help. Here, I'll grab mine. They're right over here. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. So everybody that's so watching, just go ahead and drop in the comments. Where, where are you from? from? Where are you from? Where you want to see the bad witches here? We're going to be talking. Soon. Uh, who uh, here? here. ENT body, body language. Stephanie's here. Hi. Hi. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Uh, yeah, well. this is awesome. You know, I've only done one live before. This is my second of all time. This is your second this live of all time. You're behind. behind. Yeah, I know. This is very exciting. Lives are where it's at. <laughs> right? Okay. okay, have you got your headphones in? It's just connecting. Oh, there's somebody oh, watching there's somebody from our room. Cool, living in Ecuador. Living in Ecuador. Very That's cool. Awesome. And New York, York. Hypno Heal is here. Let's see. Okay, let's see if we can get this sound sorted out. Okay. Hi. <laughs> okay, that's way. Better. All right. I think this is the best we're gonna do. I think. <laughs> okay, that's actually at like 110 percent better. So that's perfect. So if that works for you. Whatever you did, then we're good. Okay, excellent. Okay, perfect, yeah. And you can see me and hear me okay, right? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Okay, perfect, okay. So, uh, wow, lots of people hopping in and watching. Okay, so welcome, Joanna, welcome, Joanna. Uh, very excited to ha and happy to have you here. You are a clinical hypnotist from the Toronto area. You studied at the University of Toronto. Um, you have your own office now. You're, you're seeing clients. You're doing all kinds of great stuff. You're all over the internet with your YouTube channel. You've got a podcast. You're keeping very busy. Um, and surprisingly, this is just your first or second uh, Instagram live broadcast. So very cool. Uh, and thank you for, you know, being here with me for that. So um, there's my quick introduction. Please just uh, briefly introduce yourself. Say hello to the hello to the crowd. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for the summary. That basically sums it up. I can't think of anything else I would want to add. Um, clinical hypnotist. My office is in Newmarket, Ontario. Uh, but I do virtual sessions as well, so that reaches out to the entire world. And it's very exciting because I've worked with people all over the place, you know, U.S., Europe, and I love helping people out. It's my forte. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, as of recently, you're also uh, a Family Feud champion. That's right. We were undefeated. <laughs> Uh, once you play three games, they say, okay, no more. You've won enough. And we won all three. It was so much fun. Um, unfortunately, Jerry D didn't want to get hypnotized on the show. I did offer, <laughs> but that's totally fine. You know, some people are not for it, and I respect that completely. 
That's awesome. Yeah, I actually watched, I wasn't able to watch all of it. I watched 100% of the first episode, and then I watched like most of the second epi episode and a little bit of the third episode. And you guys That's like killed so sweet of you. Your family is like clearly family feud experts. Like it was amazing. Like, I, and I, th I even told you this in a message, like felt sorry for the competitors, like for the other families. Cause you guys just did so well <laughs> that like you blew everybody out of the water. If it weren't for like the three episode max, you probably would still like, you would just be on family feud. To this day. Yeah. yeah we're, we would still be playing. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Okay. Um, and I'm sure, you know, it, it was the hypnosis that uh, probably gave you some of that power, some of that focus, right? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. For the fast money at the end, when they ask you rapid fire questions, I was putting myself into trance beforehand. So I was able to just react super quick. And it worked because we won $20,000. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, very cool. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, you can you can be in trance and have your eyes open and be talking and be doing stuff and have access to resources that um, you wouldn't otherwise have access to, right? Um, so, which brings us back to, you know, the main topic of today. Obviously, I'm a hypnotherapy trainer, you're a hypnotist, and, you know, I think that's what people want to hear about here. Um, so, what was your journey like? Like, how did you discover hypnosis? Why did you, uh, why and how did you get into hypnosis? Yeah, it's kind of a funny story, actually, because when I discovered hypnosis, I was just browsing on the University of Toronto uh, website. And I was feeling a little bit lost in my journey. I was doing behavior therapy at the time, which is using um, behaviorism, mostly with kids with autism. And I was happy doing that. But I felt like it wasn't my lifelong goal. Like I wanted to find my purpose. So I was just browsing around on the website of University of Toronto. And I saw that they offered a clinical hypnosis uh, certification program. And that blew me out of the water because I was so surprised that hypnosis had like that credibility. <laughs> I was one of the non-believers, honestly. So I thought that's really interesting. So I did my research and the more that I researched hypnosis, I thought it was so incredible. I have to understand what this thing is all about. <laughs> yes. So I ended up yeah, saving up the money and signing up for the program. And once I finish you know the clinical hypnosis uh i knew that this was what i wanted to do full time outstanding and so um you know you went from being a non-believer in hypnosis to becoming now obviously you know this is your full-time thing you know being a clinical hypnotist so what were the big shifts that needed to happen in your mind like what were what was the stuff that you thought before that you realized is not true and and what do you realize now about hypnosis yeah, it was interesting because my first experience with hypnosis was when I was a kid and I ended up winning these tickets to a hypnosis show in a raffle. And when I went there, um, I was trying to convince my parents to go up there, but they were too shy. But obviously that really, I was like, oh, this is crazy, like mind control. How are they doing this? Um, and after that, I basically never thought of hypnosis for like <laughs> 15 years. And then when I saw this, pro like when I saw the website, it brought all those memories back of like amazement and wonderment. And um, I just I had to know how they did it. And when I went into the course, uh, Georgina Cannon teaches it and she has her own uh, business as well. Um, I'm a very scientific person as well. I come from a science background. So when I went in, I went in with the science. I was like, okay, show me the empirical evidence that this is a real thing because that's the only thing that's going to sell me on this nothing yeah. else and you know she brought somebody up who's been hypnotized before and right away they just dropped into trance as soon as she started and that i was like okay i just saw it in front of my eyes how did you do that and then she broke it down and <laughs> once you break it down it completely makes sense why hypnosis works yeah. you know it's a very natural state of mind to be in um, it's just giving that person the access to that state of mind where they're highly suggestible and relaxed. Um, and honestly, it really is just a skill that anyone can learn if they want to. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm glad that you say that. It, it's a skill that anyone can learn that they, if they want to. Um, and, you know, and Erickson said that too. He said, you know, going into trance is all about learning to go into trance. Hypnosis is all, is all about learning to go into trance. And, you know, and there's a lot of these people who uh, out there who 
you know, say things like, oh, I can't, I could never be hypnotized or I can't go into trance. And of course, you and I know that if they're alive and speaking, then they've already been in trance at some point in their life, probably that same right. day and probably every day that they've been alive, right? Um, so I think, you know, a big part of people coming around and, you know, um, embracing hypnosis for the power that it has, the first step is just understanding what it actually is. Because, you know, there's that Hollywood idea or that, you know, um, misconception of what hypnosis is, which I, I think would agree, I would agree it's not real, you know, for the most part. But then there's what actual real clinical hypnosis is and the hypnotic state is, which is very much real and very much part of the human experience anyways, right? That's right. I love the hypnosis in um, like Hollywood. I think it's so interesting how it's portrayed. Um, recently, have you ever watched the show Snowpiercer? I've not watched it and I've not heard of it. So fill me in. Oh, okay. It's on Netflix okay. and they, they do a really cool um, version of hypnosis where I was like, okay, they actually got it right this time. Basically, it's like a post-apocalyptic world where the only survivors of the human race are on this long train. Yeah. And one of the train um, carts, they have a hypnosis booth where people get hypnotized back into being in the real world. And it's very therapeutic for the people in the train because they're able to experience the real world again. And I thought that was so amazing. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It was like the one uh, Hollywood version of hypnosis that I was like, yes, two thumbs up. <laughs> cool, that's interesting. So they could like be hypnotized to go back and like relive the, the great parts of, of the real world and all that stuff. Okay, cool. So I've got to, I've got to check that out. And that is one of the things that, you know, um, you can do through hypnosis. I don't know if, the, it's, if it's always done in the clinical sense, but like reliving positive past states is something, you know, or revivifying positive past experiences is something we can totally do with our clients or with ourselves, like when we're trained, right? Um, very cool. What's some of the other like cool stuff that you're doing with your clients with hypnosis? What do people come to you uh, for help with or, or for guidance or, or for help, hypnosis in? Yeah, well, I'm always really impressed with what people come into me for because sometimes it is so obscure that I'm like, that's so cool that you thought of hypnosis for this issue because typically you can help people with whichever problem when it comes to mindset. So for example, I've worked with um, an individual who is in the army and they have this mental block where they're stuck. Um, they can't pass this one test. They know that they can, it's a physical test, but for some reason they keep failing it every single time. So we've been working on that to pass this test. Um, he did, I think, two sessions. And after that, he was able to pass the test, no problem. Um, so typically, though, like that's just an example of one of the interesting ones. Yeah. Um, I work with people with anxiety. Um, that's been a very popular um, case uh, with my clients because of the pandemic. There's a lot of um, anxiety just in general, you know, that compounding of fear of going outside and whatnot. Um, I work with smokers. A lot of people want to quit smoking because of the lung issues that you might get from them. And a lot of confidence as well. People just want to feel more confident in themselves. And also weight loss is a very popular one too. Yeah. So yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, all stuff that's great to address, obviously, with hypnosis. Let's, let's talk a little bit more about confidence, because I think that's one of the things that um, people might be surprised about if they're not yet too aware of what hypnosis is all about. And there used to be this kind of belief that like, the only way to become more confident was to like face your fears head on. And if you were nervous about public speaking, you just had to do it a bunch of times and like, cry your way through the pain, and then you'll get the confidence. Um, and now, you know, obviously, we know there's better, simpler ways. So like, let's think about a hypothetical client who's coming to you um, because they have problems with self-esteem or they have problems with self-confidence, what might their journey kind of be like? Like, how will, how will their, them working with you change um, their life? Oh, that's a great question. Um, typically, when somebody first comes in, I ask them a lot of background questions about, you know, where they're at at the moment. So, you know, were they confident as a child? Um, when do you feel like your confidence level changed? Was there any incidents recently that brought you into hypnosis or like into the hypnosis clinic um, that sort of got you moving towards this goal of changing your confidence? And from there, I typically 
sort of design um, the hypnosis script around their goals, um, compounding um, those different things that they want to achieve mentally. So whether it be removing a mental block from the past, like maybe a father said that they weren't good enough is, you know, doing some regression hypnosis and confronting that individual in the past and saying, you know, I'm an adult now, and this is how you made me feel as a kid. And I know it wasn't my fault because I was a child and I didn't deserve to hear that sort of thing. And that can be so therapeutic to have that space to work on those past issues because our mind remembers all these things, right? It's all in there sort of ruminating, even though you're not consciously aware of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, um, you make these types of changes, you guide people through these processes and, you know, what is it like for the person post session? Once they leave the session, they go out into the world. How does it, how do they tend to feel afterwards? Yeah, well, it's really interesting. My, my, the most common reaction, honestly, is when people open their eyes and they're like, wow, that was really relaxing. <laughs> they're so surprised at how their mind was able to function at that level. And it's so funny how surprised people are because it's, you did it yourself. We just facilitated it, right? I'm not doing anything to you. I'm, I'm guiding you into this state of mind and you have access to this power whenever you want it. We just need to practice to get there. Yeah. And yeah, people will walk out the door feeling nice and happy. And it's wonderful because I always say I want to work with you as least amount of sessions as possible. We want to get you out the door feeling great as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I always tell my, my students, you know, it's, it's your job as a hypnotherapist or as a, as a hypnotist, basically to put yourself out of business one client at a time, you know, with every client. Right. See, you've got to get them to the result as quickly as possible. That's the name of the game when it comes to hypnosis. That's why, like, we enjoy this incredible statistic in the hypnosis industry of, of greater than 90% success after as little as six sessions because we have that focus on getting the results, on getting people to where they want to be as quickly as possible. And I think, like, I think some of the reactions that I see from my clients and from my students is, like, yeah, you know, the process was uh, amazing and relaxing and felt really good and I felt a shift and everything. But then when they go out into the world and it's like, um, the shift feels subtle because they almost forget the old them, right? There's part of this like, okay. you know, and Bandler used to teach this in the 70s when he was teaching hypnosis and NLP. He would say, you have to be careful because your clients will often forget they had a problem to begin with and not be aware of why they even came to see you anymore, right? Um, and so, yeah. uh, and, which is a great thing, which is a great thing, except when, you know, they, they you know, don't remember why, <laughs> why they're sitting in your office, right? Which is a rarity, but, you know, it can happen. Mm -hmm. So it's like, do you ever have that experience where a client will call you back or you'll do a follow-up and they'll be like, you know, I almost forgot, you know, I'm so much into my new life and doing this new stuff and I almost forgot the old me. What do, you, what do you think about that? Oh, when you bring that up, it reminds me of um, one client that I had recently where she was working on weight loss. And I mentioned, so there's, there's really interesting studies that are coming out of Google for losing weight. Hmm. I don't know if you've heard about that or whatnot, but they, they were practicing on their own staff with just minor changes of where they were placing the food. So like if they had candy, you know, they would put it in, um, instead of having the candy out, they would put it in jars that were like neutral colors. So they weren't as attractive to go to, or instead of having the food out, you know, they would be in cupboards and just those small little differences. So I was like, okay, well, that's an interesting, you know, just fact that if you put your chips away, not on the counter under like the sink or something, you're going to forget that they're there. Um, and then, like having smaller bowls, just those like little behaviorism things that I throw in with my hypnosis, you put that into the script, okay, you're going to go buy some new bowls with smaller bowls, you're only going to eat chips out of this bowl, you only have one and then you feel full. So yeah, she came back and she was like, you know, I'm stacking, but like, I'm not eating as much It's so she just was like, yeah, I, I feel like it's just the bowl that's making the change. I'm like, but no, like you used to eat the entire bag of chips, you know, <laughs> that's why you came in. And then she's like, yeah, I guess so. But she feels like I didn't do anything. You know, it was just the bowl that did it. <laughs> yeah, it's, Which is just fine. Bowl. it's just the magic. Yeah. 
example, right? Yeah. And that's, you know, it's kind of like fun when that happens with a client where it's like, it's very obvious the change that has occurred and like they've got their result and then everything. But it's like, that's another mark of like a good hypnotherapist. It's like they almost don't even realize how big of a shift it was because they've become so disconnected from the old patterns, the old like limiting beliefs are just so gone out of the reality that it's just not a part of, you know, life anymore. So, uh, very Definitely. Cool. It warms my heart. <laughs> yeah. It warms your heart. Right. Yeah. Uh, very cool example. So, um, you know, on the subject of, you know, being a, a hypnotherapist, you know, I understand you were working in a different style of therapy before, but, you know, I like to say that for people who, you know, have empathy for others and care for others and, and want to serve others, you know, this business is one of the greatest businesses to be in because of the level of freedom that it gives you. And, you know, most entrepreneurs these days are, or excuse me, most hypnotherapists these days are also entrepreneurs. You know, it's an easy and good way to build up, you know, a business while helping other people. So what is like now that you're doing this and you're doing it full time and you've got your office and everything, what is life like for you? How is it different than it was before? Oh, wow. Well, honestly, it doesn't feel like work to me anymore. And I know that's kind of like the corny thing that everybody says, oh, I want a job where it doesn't feel like I'm working. But honestly, that's how it feels like I love talking with people. And even coming into this interview, I was like, okay, Joe, don't ask him questions, because this is an interview about you. <laughs> like, I just love talking to people and getting to know them. So when somebody comes into the office, it's just a bonus that I'm getting paid for it. Um, it's, it's so nice. And every single day, I just feel so happy that to be here, uh, where I'm at, I feel so fortunate that I was able to get this off the ground. Yeah. So for any of your client, or, well, I guess students, right? You call them yeah. students. Of course. For any of students out there, don't give up. It took me about a year to get everything fully off the ground, but it is very worth it. Yeah. And, you know, and now that you're doing it, like the level of sound, you know, if it doesn't feel like work and, you know, you're helping people, the level of satisfaction is there and, you know, uh, the freedom is there and all that good stuff. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say, you know, for those people that are watching, uh, that are thinking about getting into this business, regardless of what path they take, um, the rewards are really there. And yeah, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to, um, you know, get off, get off the ground. Although one of the things that I specialize in my training is, you know, hitting the ground running, right? I like to see my students seeing their first paid clients within the first weeks um, after their, after their training and then building, you know, building from there, obviously. So what tips do you have, um, you know, for people who are starting out in this business? Maybe, you know, obviously you've learned a lot over the last couple of years. Uh, what tips do you have for them? Yeah, definitely. Well, I guess thinking back to how I do my business, my main thing is organic advertising. Um, currently, I actually don't do any paid advertising because I mostly just do it through either Instagram uh, and mostly YouTube. YouTube's my big one where I get a lot of uh, interaction with people as well who will eventually book their sessions online. But putting out little samples, you, you don't want to put out too, too much, obviously, because you want to save something for you know, the actual paid customer. But I, I typically put out, you know, like 15 minute little uh, introduction hypnosis stuff and that seems to be working really well um i do a lot of people have talked to me whether to get an office or not so i think that was an interesting debate as well i think it was definitely worth it because i have a good balance of people in new market coming in yep. uh, to the office itself and then the rest of them are basically from all over the world cool. so i have like two different types of clients you know the locals versus the, the general world itself. Yeah, cool, very good. And what about people who um, are watching, who are not thinking about hypno, you know, becoming a hypnotherapist, but are thinking about visiting a, a hypnotist? How do they know when the time is right? How do they know when it's a good time to go and see a hypnotist? They have, they're having a problem or they're having a challenge or there's something that they wanna do in life. Um, you know, what would be the next step and how do they know it's time? Yeah, I think if you are in the stage of contemplation, there is no harm in talking to um, a hypnotist about the issue. Um, you know, there's free consultations if you wanted to reach out to either me or Ryan. I'm sure both of us would be down to just discuss your options, you know. If you're in that state of contemplation, you're so close to the state of change. And it's just taking that small step forward to yeah. reach your goals. Yeah, I agree. You know, and uh, if you're thinking it might 
help to see a hypnotist, as Johanna says, reach out to a hypnotist and, and just have a, have a chat. Like um, Johanna obviously offers free consultations. I do too, although mostly what I do these days is teaching actually, certify hypnotherapists. Obviously that's 99% uh, of my business these days. So um, for those that do want to you know, get in touch with you, uh, Johanna, um, how do they do that? Where do they find you? How do they find your YouTube content? Because I was looking at some of your YouTube stuff and it's really good and people need to see it. So how do people get in touch with you? How do they connect with you? Sure. So um, my YouTube is just Johanna Dinsdale. If you uh, look that up on YouTube, you'll probably find my page. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yep. um, we also have secretsuccesshypnosis.com, which is my website where you can book a session. And then, of course, there's the Instagram Secret Success Hypnosis. Cool. Perfect. All right. And you offer free consultations. Do you have like, do you have a waiting list right now? Or are people able to get in relatively quick with you if they're, if they're looking to work on something? Um, there might be a week wait, but um, yeah, typically you could probably get something. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, good. Well, thank you very much, uh, Joanna, for joining me today. Thank you for um, sharing all of your wisdom and all of your experience, um, you know, and, uh, and, and a little bit about family feud, which I was really excited to hear about. Um, actually, before, uh, thank you for tuning in. <laughs> we got we, a couple of minutes before we go. Um, um, any interesting behind the scenes info about family feud? Um, that might be interesting for either for me or for the people that are watching. Oh, well, it was definitely an experience. So the CBC place where they aired the show is in downtown Toronto. And they had to be very, very careful with, you know, um, the families due to the pandemic that's happening. Yeah. So when we went in there, it was really interesting. Like they had like these corridors with arrows. And then we had our green room, which was like a big, giant box and the producer would call us in like he had a little tv and would like call in and say hey guys this is what you're gonna do you're gonna be going to the set in five minutes so get all your makeup ready <laughs> and then we were shepherded out onto the big stage and jerry d was hidden off somewhere they had him off to the side and we did like a little practice run so they did a question about um, if a snail could make an upgrade to its shell, what would it be? <laughs> oh. What would it be, Ryan? It would be adding lights, adding like headlights and taillights. Yeah, I think that was one of the answers. Nice job. <laughs> yeah. They're on the board. So that was really fun. Um, Jerry was very friendly. <laughs> yeah. And I actually, they didn't put this in, but I actually did faint on stage at one point. <laughs> You did? <laughs> because of the hot lights. I was <laughs> so overwhelmed. And at one point we had to do the pose and we had to jump up. And just from all the adrenaline and the hot lights, I jumped up and I just completely fainted. So I'm very glad that they cut that out. <laughs> Were you okay? Did you like wake up quickly? My dad caught me actually. So <laughs> he was my hero. <laughs> Wow, geez, that, that is an interesting piece of like behind the scenes trivia about family. Oh, just a little bit of secret information for you guys. <laughs> yeah, very cool. I'm glad. I'm, yeah, I'm glad we, we touched on that. Okay, very good. Okay, so um, I think that covers everything we wanted to cover finally um, for the day. So thank you again, Joanna, for being here, for sharing with us, for talking about the feud and talking about uh, your journey to become a hypnotist. For those of you that uh, are watching this and you resonate with Joanna and you think she might be a good match for you to help you with whatever you need help with, please reach out to her. She does a free consultation. Um, I know the, you know, who she trained with and where she trained and I have full confidence in her ability. Uh, and as well, obviously I've been watching her uh, via social media these last few months and uh, have great confidence in what she's doing and the results she's getting for people. So feel free to reach out to her. If you're interested in becoming the next Joanna, becoming a hypnotherapist, a clinical hypnotist, uh, go ahead and reach out to me. I also offer free strategy calls uh, you know, on that topic to talk about the training that I run and the certification program that I run. So again, thank you. Uh, have a great rest of the day and uh, all the best to everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye.